Greetings my lovelies, this is Blake here and welcome to my review of The Equalizer, Denzel Washington's latest action thriller. So I, I was pretty interested in checking this one out. I thought the previews looked good, it had an interesting concept, and of course, you know, Denzel Washington is almost always reliable in both his performances and the projects he chooses, although that does raise a question of should he be praised or criticized for you know, in the past, like, five years or so, he's made plenty of movies, and all of them are solid, but at the same time, none of them are exceptional. Very few stand out. Like, I remember bits and pieces of Safe House, and then I remember that parts of those bits and pieces belong to other Denzel Washington movies. <laughs> um, so it's just, they all sort of blend in together. One of the reasons I've actually really grown to respect the Book of Eli is that at least it's very different um, compared to his other stuff. Uh, you know, it's not a great movie, maybe not even a good movie, but at least the parts I remember from that film, I at least know are from the Book of Eli. I wish Denzel would shake up his filmography more, occasionally do something that you would not expect him to do, but uh, at least once again, you know, I figure going into The Equalizer, I was going to get a solid film. And honestly, I was a little disappointed. Uh... The Equalizer isn't bad. In fact, I'd say overall it's just it's just okay. Um, but it's very unfocused, a little slow. It's much longer than I think it needed to be, even though I don't think it was that long of a movie. I, it was a little over two hours, I believe. Um, I have not seen the TV show that it was based off of. In fact, I'd never even heard of the TV show until... You know, this movie was in production, but one of my co-workers was just describing it to me, and it felt like the filmmakers of this one honestly didn't really want to make an adaptation of the TV show. They wanted to do their own story, but at the same time, you know, it got funding because it was supposed to be an adaptation of this TV show, so they forced in elements from the show uh, in, into this story. Now, I could be totally wrong, uh, but uh, from what I've heard, the TV show is about this former CIA agent. I don't know. They never really make it clear what he was supposed to be. Uh, but he just goes out of his way to you know help people in need. Sort of like the A-Team, I guess, except with just one guy. Uh, and in this film, there are elements of that. And I think it's, it's supposed to be a prequel, so presumably if they make a sequel, it'll be much more like the TV show. But um, the parts where it just shows him randomly helping people um, in terms of, you know, when they're in actual trouble, uh, they felt a little superfluous to the rest of the film. Um, the story was obviously more focused on this private war between Denzel Washington's character and uh, the main bad guy, which, you know, that in terms of that storyline, we've seen it done many times before, even though I thought this movie executed it pretty well. Uh, but, you know, like, otherwise, I started to think it was getting a little cheesy how Denzel Washington just happened to be in the right place at the right time and knew the right people in order to... You know, intervene in all these situations. So, you, like you've seen the previews, you know, he just happens to be there when a cashier is getting robbed, and the guy who's stealing from her ends up taking her ring, and of course he puts it back, and it's kind of a heartwarming and touching sequence, while at the same time being a little badass. Uh, but um, it, it just it, it wasn't necessary. Uh, now, if they included that scene earlier as a way to establish this character. Maybe it would have worked better, but um, otherwise it just kind of seemed like they were throwing that in there so um, you'd know that you were in fact watching an adaptation of The Equalizer. Uh, there's another bit too where like this guy who he's helping out to become a security guard, um, you know, his mother gets harassed by these corrupt cops. Well, once again, that's kind of a stretch. It just so happens that this guy knows Denzel Washington during this short time period where all this stuff seems to be happening around Denzel Washington. Um, man, this must be the most corrupt town ever. Uh, but, um... So it just I, I started to think that was a little goofy, even though, once again, those are the moments that I presume would have been more loyal to the TV show. Uh, so if they had taken those elements and just organized them in a more... 
I, I, in a way that it felt more organic to the rest of the story than you know it would have worked fine. But otherwise, like I said, it just felt like the filmmakers didn't really want to make an equalizer adaptation as much as they just wanted to, um, you know, make their own normal action thriller. Uh, and of course, I'm sure you know purists are probably going to be annoyed <laughs> that there isn't more of the stuff that I'm complaining about. And uh, you know, there's certain elements to that. I don't know if they're from the TV show or not. Like I presume how he you know, he, you know counts out the seconds as he plans on doing stuff. I, I guess that's coming from the TV show because it is sort of an odd point to have. But otherwise, I, I don't really know. I'm just speculating. Uh, so, like I said, it's a, it's pretty unfocused. There are a lot of scenes I felt that could have easily been omitted. Also, uh, I, I felt a total detachment from the main character. I didn't really understand his character arc. Um, you know, even his motivations are just kind of bleh. Um, the whole reason he gets into this story is because he's bonding with this young prostitute girl, and uh, and they're not close or anything, but, you know, they've had a few nice interactions. Um, and then he sees her in trouble. She ends up getting really hurt, so then he get, goes after the bad guys, primarily for revenge. Um, but she's... Even though she's prominent during the first act, once she gets sent to the hospital, she's pretty much gone, all the way up until the very end of the movie. So that motivation just kind of felt underdeveloped. Um, they have a bunch of stuff, like where he goes and meets his former boss, um, who's married to Bill Pullman for some reason. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, they make this big deal. You know, she kind of helps him out. So that's supposed to tie into his past. But even then, it's still sort of vague. This whole scene felt a bit too long. Although, you know, since these actors are obviously recognizable, you'd want to milk that for every second you had. Um, and, you know, she says, you know, he wasn't, you know, asking for help. He was asking for permission. And, um, once again, because this relationship is so underdeveloped, I didn't really get why. And, uh, another one, he was at one point married and his wife died. And then they don't say that until later on, but as soon as they reference that he had been married in the past, you know, that that's what went down. Um, and he says that, you know, he promised her, um, that he would not go back to that life. But once again, because the wife is only kind of brought up sporadically, you don't really care about that either. So, um, I just, I never really felt the emotions that I was supposed to feel in regards to this character and why he's doing what he's doing. Um, now Denzel Washington, on the other hand, does great, and he's having a lot of fun with this role, and I think Denzel Washington is one of those guys who he sort of does deliver the same performance over and over again, and unlike Liam Neeson, he doesn't really add new layers to the same old shit to keep from becoming stale, but, uh, and sometimes that really does bring down the movie, but here I had no issue with it. He had enough charming and funny moments, and also, and they, uh, made an interesting contrast to when he was being intense and kind of scary, uh, so I had no issue with his acting, and I thought the character was entertaining to watch, even though, once again, I just could not make an emotional connection to him. Um, the dialogue was very, uh, I'm going to say pretentious, but in a very cliched way. Um, man, this movie did not have any subtlety, even though it seemed to think it was being subtle. So, just like in the first act, there were some notable interactions I wrote down. Um, he's describing the, the old man in the sea book to this hooker, and, you know, he says that in the end, the, the fish was taken by, a, you know, a shark, and uh, she's like, well, that's a sad ending. He's like, no, and he starts going into this, you know, speech about how, um, you know, he met his adverse, his greatest adversary, um, you know, pretty late in life, and, and I'm like, okay, that's obviously going to tie into this character and what he's going to do, even though, once again, that's a potential character arc that was never really explored, but I just thought that was a bit too on the nose, once again, even though it's trying to be subtle about it. Um, he later on describes another book where he says it's about a, a guy who thinks he's a knight in the time when there are no more knights. 
Duh. <laughs> um, once again, a, a bit too blatant. And then she even responds with, um, that sounds like my world. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> but then I, even the, I think the line that made me laugh the most was when she says something along the lines of, you have you know, a certain loneliness in your eyes. And I'm thinking, does anybody ever actually talk like that? Yet, I hear that line so often in movies, and the way it's delivered, uh, it's like the film thinks that it's being so deep and moving, but it, I just heard that said for far too long to where it has absolutely no, you know, impact on me, while at the same time it sounds so corny. Um... But at least there are a lot of funny moments in this film. Um, you know, this isn't a comedy or anything, but there are some moments where, yeah, you laugh at you know, how Denzel Washington responds to certain situations and just how you know insanely badass he can be in this movie. And also, you know, when I said earlier that the main story involving the main hero versus the main villain was executed pretty well, it's primarily because not only is Denzel Washington such a badass and awesome hero... The villain, I can't think of his name, I had it up for a while, but he's been in a bunch of movies. In fact, last I saw him was Martin Sokas, I doubt I'm pronouncing that correctly, but he almost always plays this kind of role. Although the last time I saw him was in Sin City 2, he was Ava Lord's husband, um, where he wasn't the villain. Uh, but he's having a lot of fun in this movie, and he overacts to such an extent, but in a way that is very entertaining. I, I, I thought he was both pretty imposing, and yet uh, there was a certain hamminess there, but whenever he's on screen, you know, I always paid attention to him. Sometimes he'd even steal the scene from Denzel Washington, and that says a lot. Uh, but he's also, you know, portrayed as really smart and resourceful, sort of like the villainous version of Denzel Washington's character. And every time they share the the screen together, man, I, I just loved their interaction. So it's not that this movie doesn't have, um, you know, its merits. Uh, you know, even when it's just kind of being ordinary, it's never bad. Uh, you know, I complained about a bunch of stuff earlier, but yeah, they keep it from the film from standing out, from being especially good, but it never makes any, you know, glaring mistakes that, you know, brought it down to bad movie territory. Also, I really did like the finale. The finale was very exciting, very intense. I loved the music that accompanied it. Um, just, there's something gratifying about watching Denzel Washington kick the shit out of all these villains. While at the same time, you never feel he's necessarily, or at least I never felt that he was out of danger. Um, he, he gets a few wounds throughout the, the film, and um, even though I never expected him to die... Uh, you know, the film, it, it correctly or properly cast its illusion on me to where I wasn't necessarily thinking about how predictable the film was while I was watching it. Uh, even though it's kind of a generic action thriller at its core. Uh, that's, that's really all I have to say. Um, I think it's a good rental. In a lot of ways, it's like November Man, where... I, I could point out uh, things that it doesn't do very well, but... It just it didn't always succeed in the areas that it wanted to succeed, but at the same time, it never totally failed. Um, I'm probably just going to forget this movie, but I don't regret watching it. I'd say, though, it's definitely more of a rental. Wait till it comes out on Blu-ray or DVD and check it out then. I don't think you necessarily have to see it in theaters. Um, instead, go watch A Walk Among the Tombstones. That is a much better movie, although it might alienate some viewers because it's very slow-paced in order to build atmosphere and uh, you know suspense and character, uh, as well as having some very dark content, which just might disturb some people a bit too much. Uh, so if you think you can get through that kind of movie, definitely check A Walk Among the Tombstones out, whereas I think few people are going to, fewer people are going to dislike The Equalizer, but also fewer people are going to like it. But unfortunately, a lot more people are probably going to see it, um, which is too bad, but yeah, I guess there are worst films that have made more money. Uh, so I did not do a written review of this. Uh, I did a written review of Saw 4, as well as The Protector 2, uh, 
with Tony Jaa. I don't know why he felt the need to clarify that. As far as I know, Jackie Chan never made a sequel to his protector. Although that would be kind of funny. <laughs> um, I'd watch it. Uh, so also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I finally cleaned out my movie review indexes of broken links since Freewebs screwed me over and closed all my Freewebs pages down. Um, you know, even though I haven't put them up uh, on my new website, uh, at least you know, everything you see in the index should work. Uh, so please, you know, go through those and. Uh, so, once again, wait till DVD to check out The Equalizer, but definitely check out The Equalizer on DVD, uh, uh, especially if you have something like Netflix, where you're not really paying a significant amount of money for it. Uh, so, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys later.